Hello, Hello. sir. <laughs> My brother, how are you, sir? How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. How are you doing, sir? Um, blessed. Always good to catch up with you. Yes, yeah, so we thank God. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. It's a great thing to do. Well done. Amen. Well done. It's Thank so good sir. to have you on the ownership series. It's a privilege, Joe. Hmm. Yeah. You know, when you invited me, I was and you showed me the list of people that have been here. I was like, ah, <laughs> I take reach me. <laughs> well, it's a blessing. Yeah. So it's good to finally catch up on this platform. Yes. And I, I believe it's going to be an interesting uh, couple minutes. Uh, together sharing from the depth of your experience and all of the things that god has um, taken you through all of the journey and i believe it to be a blessing to everyone connected tonight but yeah. let's just begin by prayers that, that's critical for us so let's pray heavenly father again we just want to thank you tonight for the privilege of fellowship and brotherhood Hallelujah. lord we commit this session into your hands we ask that you take charge you grant us utterance and let this session be of tremendous blessing to everyone connected and everyone that will watch in the nearest future. Amen. Thank you, Amen. precious Father, in Jesus. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's God. Hallelujah. Well, again, Emma, it's so good to, to catch up with you. And uh, for those of you uh, that may be wondering, uh, Pastor Steve and Emma, oh my God, how did your relationship come to be? Our relationship dates back to many, 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 many years. Um, yeah. we are co egos from the same source, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's such a blessing to see all of the things we were seeing those days on the campus, um, blessing uh, our generation. And I must say, good job, well done. The Lord is your strength, thank you, thank you sir. So, Amen. Glory be to God. Tonight, uh, you know, different people have different perceptions about you when they see you. The man of many sides is both, uh, we used to see you as a comedian those days in school. You crack us up every time you go on the platform. You sing, the man of many parts. Uh, so different people can define Ima to be different things. But in your own words, who is Ima ONG? Ah, uh, um, so yeah, Ima, <laughs> you know, Ima OMG is over the years, because I'm still getting to know myself also, you know, like mm -hmm. as God would lead me. But yeah, over the years, um, I'm, I'm, and um, how do I put this? I'm a showcase of, and I'm not even trying to uh, be religious or because I'm on this platform. But you know, recently it's it's what I've become. I've, I've gotten to understand. I'm a showcase of um, God's creativity and God's glory. You know, because even in terms in, in terms of the journey you talked about you know yeah. there was yeah i can do a lot of these things but the transition in part time it wasn't like an intentional process where i would be like okay for this number of years i'll do this for this number of years i'll do this you know yeah. i just back then i thought i was just following however i feel you know but over the years i've realized that it's god has been ordering my steps because it felt like i just used to just take the right steps you know and there's nobody that knows how to take the right steps you know so yeah oh. Um, I'm a man of many sides, but overall is an expression of God just wants you to see I'm very creative in one person, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, and he's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. We, we yeah. see all of the great things and uh, the excellence you bring into uh, the things you do, the touch, the class, the, the spiritual dimension, everything is such a blessing to always watch you minister uh, and you, uh, do your thing. Now, let's try to go back. Uh, you know, uh, behind every glory, they say there's a story. So when we see people doing great things, uh, striving in, their, in the whatever calling that they've been called into, they started from somewhere. Tell us a little bit how was your childhood like, and um, tell us a little bit about your salvation experience, because definitely every one of us know you're a man of God. Uh, maybe we should be calling you reverend, I don't know, or, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> brethren is fine, okay. brethren. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your childhood and how you've evolved. Yeah. How did your salvation experience 
come, come to be? Yeah, so my childhood, um, I grew up, you know, in a loving home, although I grew up with a single mom, you know, but looking back, she really did a great job, you know, because she brought me up right, you, you know, you know, there's this saying that, yeah, if a man is not in the home, you feel it and everything. And obviously, a home deserves a father and everything, but by the grace of God, my mom did a real great job. So I grew up, I grew up with a single mom with, you know, a brother, five sisters and everything. And uh, so, yeah, looking back, it was, you know, I was a small boy. I didn't understand, but there was a lot of pain, you know, in terms of seeing what my mom had to go through and all that stuff. And how, by, back then, how I used to bring it out was through my talents. The first escape was comedy. Because, for instance, I would just see, she tried to hide it, but most times I was working on my mom, seeing, seeing her crying and all that and everything. And I wasn't the man of soothing words then, you know. So the approach I used to use was to try to make her laugh, you know. And it was just an innate thing. You know, I, I think that's how the comedy side came in. Because when I now even took it seriously and I became a stand-up comedian one from, from CU, Covenant University, and how that also came about was because I was said 2005, when when we got to school, the way Papa bombarded us then with you know lectures and and that was the first time I was in a it was so serious and tense, you know that first two weeks I thought that was how it was going to keep going because it was so you know back to back. So the the approach was for two reasons was when when we finally had variety night it was number one for me to try try to calm the atmosphere. Then number two, if it did not work, then they would just send me away. So in my mind I was like, ah, at this because this place was you know. It was too serious, but thank God it turned out for good, you know. So it was it was a reaction, a response to what my environment was giving, you know. At the time, I was just flowing. I didn't know this was pain, and but as a mature man, I was seeing what, you know, and every time. The same thing with music, too. You know, um, sometimes, because of what my mom went through, to also, also, um, or the things going on, or on at home, or sometimes when I'm sad, I'll just go maybe get a guitar somewhere, you know, I, I just used to try to express myself and thank God for my mom because she really encouraged my talent. We had a deal. She was like, I should just make sure I do well in school. Well, so if I do, if I do well in school, she would buy me whatever I needed in terms of the instruments and everything. And thank God I used to, you know, um, primary school, secondary school. I, I used to be, I, I was like first in class. I used to be so good till sometime later when I had to face my passion, you know, so that's that. Then in terms of the salvation story, I, you know, I grew up in, I grew up into a Christian home. We were praying and everything, you know. And so it wasn't a, it wasn't a, because I know there was, I, I at least, when I went, um, going for altar call, if I know count, if I know go out for altar call at all, at least, maybe over 10 times. Do you understand? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there wasn't a, a one-time thing that, oh, I was lost and now I'm found. I think my story is um, God was holding me by the hand and was making me see his light in a gradual process. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I grew up in a home and I knew, okay, Jesus was the person to go to. And, you know, and over time, I, I started knowing him as, okay, yeah, the, the real way to God. Then over time, I started knowing him as um, my Lord. You know, then, and so it's a, even till now, like even there was a development last year in terms of my, um, how, how, how I was serious and how I took my, you know, quiet time with God. It was until last year, I really, really knew the importance because before then, the pray, the serious prayer life for me was corporate prayers, you know. So the quiet, the private ones was, you know, just let's pray in the morning and everything. But I found the importance of that last year. And there were there was also some new light I also came to this year. So it was it's been a continuous process, you know. But yeah, I have been saved from because I can't put a date to it that ah there was this day and I just received this thing and I just knew, you know. So this this for for instance, those different altar calls. There was a time my the altar <laughs> there was a time the altar call at that time was that okay, um you need to stop um lying to your mom. Okay, you need to stop fighting. You need to stop following this kind of friend. So it was in different lights. But taking my my relationship with God seriously, I think I became more intentional about it when I got married. I became more intentional about it when I got married, you know, because 
a, 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 was serious before, but it was more serious in terms of I, I shed up, shed up a lot, you know. And however serious I even thought I was, I became even more serious when COVID came. That COVID year was, was in fact, there was an album I dropped then. Uh, I called it Faith Booster. That was when, for the first time, for the first time, I read, I read, you know, you know, Papa was big about books and everything, but I never used to, if I, go, if I would read book, maybe something I needed for my work. Or do you understand? I never read, I read, um, I never read um, Facebook and everything. But that year, I know I read, and that book changed my life. And that was when I started my adventure with reading books. Um, the Miracle Meal by Papa, you, you, um, the, the book that talked about the Holy Communion, the Miracle Meal. And, you know, the manifestations I even got, even from after reading it and the kind of things that happened, you know, and that was also a new light, you know. So it's, my, me, my, the way I would describe my work is, you know, when the Bible says, the part of the, the part of the righteous shall keep shining brighter and brighter and bright. So if it's shine brighter now, that means it was maybe duller yesterday and it became brighter today. That, that means tomorrow will be brighter than today. You know, so it's, it's yeah. still a continuous process, yeah. you know. But yeah, yeah Jesus, Definitely is my Lord and my, my personal Lord and Savior, you know, and I've known that always. But I got yeah. more serious with it and more serious with it, you know. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. I think we all have different journeys, uh, different experiences on our path, different adventures in our salvation story also. And I think um, having this kind of experience where we share our own different experiences, this opportunity to share different experiences, we just help people out there to know that, look, the fact that mine does not come this way does not mean I'm getting it wrong. God deals with us uniquely as individuals. So your, your story is very, is very apt. If, you if, I, if I can story, cut you, sorry, if I can just cut you even to buttress what you just said. Uh -huh. For instance, there is, there, you know, there was a time on my page I started, you know, doing a series about the Holy Spirit because of some new revelation I got all my life. All my life, because, you know, I grew up in a CAC background, shout out to CAC by the way, that was a very solid background to have grown up and I'm still a CAC boy for life, you know, you even find some elements of CAC in Papa, you know, that's a very, you know, apostolic church, you know, but, um, you know, when, when you find things happening around and there's really nobody to take you through, to make you understand by yourself, there, there can be some misunderstandings. Most of my life to a few, maybe even early last year or something, I've always there's this misconception I've had about the Holy Spirit, you know, and it says like, it felt like not only me, this thing, not only me, no college is Holy Spirit, like everybody's accepting, everybody, because you see the signs, of, okay, so the thing about me when I was younger was, you know, everybody will pray and you see that manifestation, people falling around and you don't feel anything, you know, you know, you wait and even speaking in tongues, you expect that there's a machine that will burn the tongue out of you and you don't feel all that, all, all, all those things and you just feel like, Okay, is it just something about me? You know, but recently, like when I started that thing, when I when I read that book of Ephesians, that said, um, from the moment you accepted Christ, you already the Holy Spirit came into you. And that's not to that's not to downplay the fact that you know there's also other growth like the infilling and all that. But that was a revelation that yeah. even took me further. Yeah. You know, we talked last week also. Pastor Aaron preached something, which was also an answer to that thing, um, that um, issue I've been having. Because for the longest of times too, I could not pray in tongues, not knowing that I was the one that limited, you know, my mind because of the kind of expectations. And when, when, um, through, during his preaching last, um, um last week, he butchers also some other things I had known and everything, you know, he said that most of the time, what, um, what there's this, there's this barrier that we placed on our minds that actually block your speaking of tongues because most of the times you expect that it's automated, that it doesn't have any control within, within you that as you just stay, Something will just start and sprout you up and just be, you know, you know. Yeah. Meanwhile, Paul said, "I will speak in tongues and I will speak in, you know." So there is, there is, there is that manual beginning that you just like. A pastor Rome also says it like it's like when you start a generator, mm -hmm. you do that manual mm -hmm. push. Then when you get to the maximum solution, I'll be waiting for the call that thing. It takes over from there, you know. So a lot of a lot of misconceptions that that's why I said it was a journey. That I, you know, you have to start finding God yourself, reading the Bible and everything, and coming into the light. Then you grab this and you grab this. Then you know, and you are shedding the, some weights that you need to shed, and you are, you know, yeah. move, getting that brighter and brighter. You know, so from glory, from glory to glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. 
Now, now let, let's let's talk a little bit about your Covenant University experience. Um, we talked about <laughs> it. <in> Papa. <laughs> a number of people may anyone that I, I used to think that if you never went to Covenant, you may not understand, especially in those beginning days. Uh, uh, I think sometimes I used to wonder if the sets that came after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth set ever experienced that dimension. Okay. Oh, uh, good. I see the ones these days and I say, oh God, you're having so much relaxed time. I remember those <laughs> beginning days and uh, it, when was it was we directly. You know, our experience was like <laughs> Moses to God because we were directly to Papa. <laughs> 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 yeah. and those experiences yeah. became very formative for most of us today. And they looked so tough. They looked so, in quote, mean those days. But down the years, we now come to we have now come to appreciate the impact of all of those things. So just tell us in your own from your own ex perspective, how was your experience at Covenant? How did you feel when you were coming to Covenant? And how was it your stage during your time there? So so first of all, let me start this way that Covenant University is one of the best things that has happened to me to my life. And let me even buttress that further. So yeah, salvation of Jesus is the best thing, definitely. So as at the time I got out of Covenant, Covenant University was the best thing that has happened to my life. So why I'm saying one of the best things now, because I don't want to have trouble, I don't want to enter trouble because yeah, my wife is there. So my wife is a do you understand? My daughter is there too. So I can't say uh, those ones have beat the record. But just for you to know how it it changed me. In fact, you know, I had to I had to a few years ago I had to sit back and reanalyze my life to actually realize because you won't even realize how much you have changed. You know, because even for me. I, I didn't used to go home a lot, you know, so I stayed in school. So I had already changed and my thing became normal. My mentality had changed and that new mentality became normal. So it felt like that's how I'd always been. But I had to trace it back that it was a different guy entirely that came to Covenant. And it was a different guy that went out. In terms of my um, self-esteem, in, in terms of my possibility mentality, do you understand? In terms of... of of even spirituality, you know, a lot. It. I thank God. If I didn't go to Covenant, I won't be this guy. I won't be this guy. So, so now going back to the beginning, Covenant was not anything I had on my mind to go. Not because I had a problem with it, but I, it, it, I thought it was impossible for my mom because a single mom. Do you understand? And at that, and at that time, yeah, it was the fee was you know fair compared to other private universities, but it was still quite a, a high that I didn't know my mom could afford it. But it was somebody to go to other schools. So I won't mention names. I tried to go to three universities and ask some, some, you know, I don't know, maybe because of my stature or something, some people thought I was some, I mean, I know, I know, I don't want to, to talk to much. I know Sabi, I'm not a hard guy. So when there were some those misconceptions and those, you know, they say when you are tall and you look somehow, some people already, so I already thought that I was not even going to go to university because I'm not get that energy. And I could not think, I could not fathom it in my mind. But somebody came to our house then. My sister's husband, actually, at that time, he was still toasting my sister, I think. <laughs> so he mentioned, he mentioned it to my mom that, ah, why don't you allow this guy go to Covenant? You know, blah, 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 blah. You know, they just started and the record has been good and everything. And my mom was like, oh, are you serious? You know, and, you know, and she was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And I know she sacrificed a lot and everything, you know. So you realize, especially in my set, there were lots of people that used to complain that what is all this, you know. See, the first day I went to Covenant, I will not lie. I was, in fact, when I heard the news that I was going to Covenant, I was excited. When I got there, when I saw those buildings, all those, maybe because of where I'm coming from, you know, not, I wasn't coming from exactly a poor background, but it was still a huge thing to me. So I was really happy. The only shock I had was that over serious thing that, they, you know, it was not bad, but it was just back to back. So it was a shock for me. But I was so happy. In fact, I was happy that we we're going to be wearing tie. And I felt it was cool. I will not lie to you. But at some point, as a point, when you get when you got used to it, you now be like, ah, I beg now, you know. But I was so a lot of things that people complained about. Even my joining school, it was yeah, it was not um, it was you you have to be serious and everything, but considering the fact that you know I was the guy, you know, I was quite I was like a superstar in school, sort of, you know. So my perspective was kind of different because everybody knew me, you know, everybody knew the kind of person I was, you know. So it was more or less like 
okay, you already know this guy, you know what he could he can do, and me, I know they passed my boundary, you know. So I had, I really had a slow time, and also, because I'm um, Bishop Oyedebo, I used to hear of him and everything. In fact, my first experience of him ever was that night, that, I, that first night that I said, okay, Villa, I say I want crap joke for this school. If they go send me come out, me, they send me come out. That first variety night, you know. So I got on stage, and my guys had warned me that guy, no try this, you know, this place is serious. I was, I beg, I need to calm this. So I went on stage, and I started, it was amazing. People were laughing, you know, people were laughing. Then I remember there was one particular joke. I just started. I had not gotten to my punchline. Then people started screaming. People started, I was like, ah, uh -uh. Shane, Shane, I saw I hot reach. I never reached punchline. Then I looked up. I saw Papa. That was the first time in my life. And it was coming. Oh, my. my I froze. <laughs> then he sat down. As he just sat down. I think I just said something. I, there was one punchline, something related to what happened. And as I just said it, he just started laughing. And you know when Papa laughs? Like he laughed. Oh, I was like, now nah, my, this thing, this, that thing gave me, it boosted my morale. And you know that, I know, you know that everybody else is, I'm so sorry to say this, but the dean that time, all of them, their laugh was dependent on if Papa was laughing. So as Papa laughed, as Papa laughed, everybody just got, so that thing boosted. And in fact, Covenant University boosted my craft my stage manship you know then i did it i did more of comedy i did some music with the comedy but my stage manship because they put me in lot in the in the presence of a lot of of dignitaries that i was not supposed to be in their presence at that the president of was it nevers mumba was it zambia or something like that he came i performed in his presence they had called me they called me to board of regents a couple of times board of regents papa um bishop Yedepo, um Adeboye, um and this star um that um, that is this star i thought his name is sam Madi, you know, those kind of people and they call small boy like me and i'll come and they will laugh and they, do you understand those things boosted my mind you know and the, the the ones the things that um also influenced me but at the time i didn't feel they were influencing me you know we we're young boys the lectures were too much i beg you know but they were dropping in my subconscious where those things they used to teach us you know all those eds all those by especially you know especially every single time papa called us you know papa hi jesus papa called us in the midnight like 2 a.m yeah. call these guys all of us who come to the chapel you know all those yeah. times those ones we used to complain i did so now but those things i thank god i thank god you know because you know the mind the mind is forever open the mind is that's why they said um guard your heart with all due diligence because the mind has no gates whatever enters your ears drops whether you hear it or it drops in your subconscious somewhere and it will come out as it will manifest at some point and that's the story of all those things we heard you know so yeah. covenant yeah i had i had some a few you know and most of the quote and unquote unpleasant experiences were from the people so so what i found about about see you for instance is the 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 so papa then people underneath the people underneath over they over exaggerate papa's messages and they over carry it out sometimes let me give you an example you would hear sometimes that a lot of people entered a lot of problem because of pairing papa bought brought the no pairing rule abi but when somebody like the dsa at that time sees people pairing he could even maybe suspend meanwhile let me share my own experience of pairing when that i encountered papa and he wasn't even pairing so at that at that on that day we had gone you know to tabernacle you know tabernacle you know those times we go for tabernacle service and it lasted two nights and everything so i was i walked with someone a choir friend a lady nothing nothing serious but we you know the the food in that restaurant was used to be sweeter than the one beside the tabernacle so we went to eat at the restaurant and we did not know that time had gone so by the time we were coming it was only us all the students had gone back we we're like hey jesus trouble with this us, you know and as we were coming guess the person that saw us papa do you understand me i promise you if it was if it was i don't want to mention if it was all the mario and everything they would have concocted some things but papa that night just saw us why are you guys going back he was just like you go here you go here i was shocked do you understand and my, most of the experiences i've had I, I had with him even in his so-called annoyance you would feel the love in that annoyance do you understand and you would so what me i found though, with my own experience everybody had different experiences but the ugly incidents here and there are uh, pe people that you know people that um 
you know, when the authority has been diluted, and some people that power is shaking and they are taking it out of context, you know. But overall, overall, my me is one of the things I always say it that if they are ever going to read the citation about me, they must say it that I went to Covenant University. I'm so proud of it that if I, I'm from beginning to the end, I'm really, really proud of the fact that I went to Covenant University. You know, I think, I so. Think the testimony is similar to uh, most of us. Uh, um, we can't tell our stories in life or whatever impact God is increasing us to have without tying to those four years or five years that we spent there. They were highly defining days. No, no matter the experience, they, uh, you, may have some, you may have had some challenging experience, but you yeah. cannot deny that positive things were dropped in our lives during our stay on that campus. Now, let's talk about a little bit about um, how did you, at what point in your journey did you discover your purpose? You know, uh, that this is what I am wired to do and this is what God has ordained me to do. Uh, because definitely what you studied in school is not what you are doing today. Interestingly, <laughs> myself, what I studied in school is far from what I'm doing today. Today I'm preaching with this, uh, this powerful book, but that, I was just studying that in school. <laughs> so you discover that. Uh, so at what point in your adventure, your journey, did you discover that purpose, that strike point of your purpose? Yeah. How did it come? So uh, the, my answer might be shocking. The shocking answer to that is I'm still discovering purpose. I'm still discovering the purpose. I've learned that. So my journey is literally like I'm just looking and I'm just tr trusting, you know, looking up to Jesus, just finish out our faith. I'm just trusting and I'm just following this, and it's just been leading me in the right path. For instance, um, I've, you know, I've really, I, I, I loved comedy, but comedy was not the first love. I, I wanted to do music, but not gospel music. You know, if you go, if you go to, ob obviously, you know. I wasn't doing any how music, but I thought I was going to be like a lover, singer boy guy and all those things and everything, you know. And I, you know, I tried. It didn't, you know, it didn't go through. And so one thing I've found, one thing I've found is, is, is it's, it's, it's the journey, you know, even for instance, the way I came to Covenant, I didn't plan to come to Covenant. And it will now eventually be one of the best decisions that I've taken in my life. And that's how my life journey has been, you know. And what I, so what I'm just confident in now, what I've mastered is the art of, trusting the process and when i say trusting the process trusting how god is leading me because he has made me come this fine and made me come this far and it's been amazing like if if you, i write my life story and eh, because you know when god leads you nobody they see him is you that is, you are taking the step that people are seeing and it makes you look like you are very wise if i write my the way everything has coined out it would be it would feel, feel like i'm a very brilliant guy i knew what i was going to do but i didn't i did not know in fact when I finished school, one of my main things I used to think about, that used to worry me was, I have all these talents. I'm so, yeah, I know. How do I convert this into money? How do I make money from it? I used to feel unserious mm -hmm. because I'm like, hey, see all these my friends, we don't finish, they'll be engineers. Meanwhile, funny enough, why I, I studied electrical and electronics engineering, yeah? But not, not because I wanted to study it. I, I always wanted to do music. I always wanted to do music. But when I was now coming to Covenant, when I found out I was coming to Covenant, I was looking for the course that had the least number of years so that I may I just do, may I finish, may I face my music, my love, love music, what I want to do, you know. And I, at that time, the course I was going to choose was computer science. Although, thank God, I found out that computer science is not as easy <laughs> as you think it is, you know. But the only reason I did elect elect was because that my sister's husband, who also did elect elect and is an engineer, was like, if your mom is paying, if your mom is spending this kind of money, you have to do something serious. And they, you know, a serious thing is engineering, mechanic, you know, yeah, that's why. Yeah. And I was very good. I was the jet store president in secondary school. So I was that good. I went for that cowboy maths competition. I was that good. So they were like, you can do this thing now, you know. So that was how come I studied the lecture. Then I came to see you. Then in see you. So that there's one thing about see you. Yeah, there's one thing about covenant. And it takes me back to, you know, um, one pastor here's message also that says, so I can, I can advise on what would help people walk in the line of their purpose you know but personally i think purpose purpose discovery for me is is simultaneous with the achievement of purpose you know when i get to that destination of the achievement of purpose and i'll realize yeah 
you know, you know, oh, this is what the purpose God had for me and everybody. I know I'm on the right path. You know, and one of the things that would enable you to realize you're on the right path is, first of all, the things that you're really good at and you really love doing. You didn't put, place them in yourself. Do you understand? Because, for instance, from the age of five, I was, I played my five, seven, there about, I played my first musical instrument. Then my friend made a recorder out of pipe and wood. I was just always naturally gravitating towards music. And it wasn't a decision. It was something that was in it. So that means it was God that put it, you know. And, you know, God does not waste resources. He doesn't waste gifts. So whatever he puts in you is because he has a plan for it towards his agenda and towards what he wants to use it for. So your talents and things that you are really passionate about definitely are inclined with your purpose because it's God that placed them there. You know, that one I can definitely say. So I, I got to see you. And one thing about that environment is a very spiritual environment. So it's, for me, you know, so these things that I love doing were now coming, you know, I was getting gravitated towards it more and more. And, and the environment also was enabling for me. Because, for instance, the fact that all of us, all the old school used to come out for variety night, the, around maybe like 5,000 to 7,000 audience. And that was what I would face. Do you understand? And I became like the star of that. So it was, do you understand? In real life now, you know, imagine having a show of 5,000. So it was, it was working in line for me. And it was, you know, looking back now, that's how I'm realizing it, you get. Although it was hard, combining it with my studies. And at that time, I felt like, ah, oh God, because I was, I was, um, and even my struggle, eh, sorry, let me divert to this a little bit. My struggle with my studies was not even because I didn't have the capacity. The, the major issue that ha happened was, so I didn't used to go to class. Andre level, I realized that most of the things were most of the things we were studying in Andre level, I had been taught in secondary school. The story of my secondary school is funny. They started secondary school on our head, so we were only four in the old secondary school. So they used to teach us things that they were supposed to teach us, and things they overthought us that when I did junior work, they took us to another school. I dusted everybody. Do you understand? So the foundation was strong. So by the time I came to see you. For example, the maths were things that are done in further maths. So I could. So I was like, I no need to go class. I will pass exams. Not knowing that um, attendance was compulsory. So here was I writing maths. I think I think it was even about 200 level maths, 200 or something, or something like that. They said we should answer three questions. I was already on the third question. I was happy that I was going to do this. Thing. They now came to send me out because of attendance. Then I had carryovers. And that, so that problem started from there. So it was, so it was, the issue for me was balancing what I was studying with my passion. But um, this um, MCU really enabled my passion, you know. So I came out, I had more stage confidence. I was getting better at what I was doing. Then NYC time came. I was like, oh, mommy, I know, I know if you travel anywhere and I know anybody to help me process any NYC. So I would rather not do NYC. I would stay in my house. That's how one of my friends was like, ah, my dad, no, my dad, you know, blah, blah, blah. He told his dad about me. And his dad tried to work it for both of us. I got Lagos. He did not get Lagos. He did not get... <laughs> Then I came to Lagos. You know, it was years later. See, it was even years later that I realized that I was in the same NYC set with Pastor Odukoya. The pastor now, the, that, what's his name? The one that is the pastor, Odukoya, um, Odukoya son, the one that is pastoring now. Is he? Um, Pastor Tao's Jimmy, son. Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy. So then... I, I was on NYC, uh, NYC, and Opaja. I was like, waiting to happen for a year. God, I beg, I beg. So one weekend, I, I took an excuse. My house was not far. I went to my house. I went to carry my guitar. Then I, would, I brought it to the camp. Then I would just stay somewhere. I would start singing worship songs. Then I would see these guys with tattoo, looking like Tupac, you know, surrounding me, worshiping with me. Do you understand? Yeah. It was later I realized that, whoa, after I had left. So he used to come with his friends. And they used to, they you know, he works out a lot. They used to look, you know. So he would come and it would, it would be like we'll start a worship session. People would gather around me then. We'll be singing and everything, you know. And gradually like that, people found me like, oh, the, this boy is talented. There were competitions um, um, on, the, on the NYC. They did NYC Idols. I won. They did NYC Comedy. So I won a lot of things. In fact, the first house I ever stayed, what I used to furnish the house in terms of um, sound, I want everything from the NYC, you know, store and everything, you know. So that now sets the pace. You see the way I'm aligning all these things from um, going to that school that gave us the foundation to coming to Covenant, 
you know, to serving in Lagos as if I knew what I was doing, to doing these worship sessions. That now made somebody notice me, and they now, you know, gave me um, employment to come and, you know, serve in Wazobia. You know, then Wazobia, I am, as at the time I was in Wazobia, I lost my mom, you know, and um, it was so painful. So I, I, I poured my pain into my craft. So I did a lot of amazing jingles for Wazobia, Wazobia back then. I won't go home. I'll stay there overnight. And I, that was, I was the one that started, um, YouTube because what my job was um, a producer. We used to produce station identity elements. So the kind of things that you say, um, welcome to Wazobia FM. You, you were supposed to say your voice. Well, now, welcome to Wazobia. I will now transform them to songs. Wazobia 95.1. Uh, Wazo, Wazobia. Yeah. People will now be calling, requesting that, please play that Wazobia song. We liked it. You understand? Then when I finished my NYC, my boss was like, we are not releasing you. So from there, I became the main producer for Wazobia, Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna. You get. Then from there, I now started meeting artists. I met Julius Abu, God bless that man. He was the one that gave me my first main platform. You know, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Comedy, comedy, comedy. Then I infused, cause I, cause remember my first, so while I was at Wazobia, I was trying to push my song, my love songs. You know, which you wanna go see here, cause now nah, I don't marry. I'm fisting love song for my wife. You know, I'm dropping one for our anniversary. You know, but all those. You, so imagine, I was at the station. I was in charge of putting songs on, but I would put my own song on. It won't blow. It won't do anything. Do you understand? So I became frustrated. I was making money from my MC in anyway, so I focused on the MC. In. So I was now doing music for comedy. So that was how I started that David thing I did that made me popular on Instagram. You know. So I was doing music for the clout because it was bringing numbers. So even this gospel, I, 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 um, should I say it was accidental? Because so one of those days, um, at this time, you know, I was now living alone in an apartment in through Larry. Then I just remember my mom. Even till now, I remember my mom and I still cry, you know, although I know she's in a better place, but you can't do things. You, I don't think you get over them. You know, the Lord comforts us, you know. So I remember, and one of the things my mom, one of the things she used to do, she used to sing hymns a lot, you know. So I now remembered one of the hymns. So I did an a cappella thing of it, and I posted it, you know, because of my mood. And it got a lot of, people were like, wow, this, and I'm like, ah, this is a normal thing for me now. So that's how I started my hymn series. You know, then I used to, you know, use it to act and everything, you know, and it was doing well. And for me, I was, it was strictly the numbers. Do you understand? Because I was doing it for the numbers. But people would be messaging me that, wow, this thing blessed us. I'm like, ah, me, I don't know. God bless you as they bless you. Do you understand? I, you get, so are you seeing the alignment? Then ah, I now started becoming maybe a little bit more intentional with it. You know, I'd be, I, I, you know, learned, I, I bought some new software. I tried to make my sound better. Then I, I tried to produce it better, you know, but still putting it out as music because I, at least this music is doing well. So I wasn't, it was, I, I wasn't even praying about it, you know, but it would go out, you would, and even big men would reach out to me that God bless you, you know, this, that. I'm like, okay, gradually, gradually, even the way I started, I came about uh, my band. I set up this band was, I was just like, okay, I had a lot of these ideas in my head. I wish I was like 11, 12. Do you understand? Because if you, back then, if you watch my video, I used to do this one-man band thing that I'll replicate myself, you know, because yes, of the yes, things. Yes, so, yes. so I'm like, you know what, let me just get some guys together just for the sake of Riazin. And I'll tell them exactly what I need them to do. That's why till now, if you see us live, you hear me, oh yeah, you give me, don't, 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 don't. that's the idea. Like, forget what you know. Put the one in my head, in your head, you know. So it just started that uh, I'll pay for the as you go. Let's just have a good time, you know. Then something led to the other. One thing happened one time. Somebody, I was angry at something, you know. So I was just like, in fact, can't we even have our own show? Because something happened that made me miss my bed. One long story. But so the first Fajr Friday was supposed to be a compensation that we can do this thing by ourselves. And let's use it to celebrate my birthday. And it was supposed to just be Fajr Friday one and it was not christian and praise centered the, the, so the thing about me is there's everything i do there is always the expression of praising god in me so even in my creativity the two main ways that song comes to me is songs of praise and love songs you know those are the two main when i think I, it, it comes easily so it's always been part of me but it was never anything serious so that faji in fact that's why the name is faji faji means jolly so the first faji friday was just for people to you know come and enjoy themselves and let's just sing but we had a pre-session which is what i always do that pre-session was not the thing that 
you know, went and everything, and everybody was like, wow, let's have this again. Let's, meanwhile, that first one, I even did it free. It was even my rent money I used at that time. And I had to travel to, you know, long story. So the second, people were not commenting that, wow, they felt guilty that they didn't pay for this. Can we do another one? So we did one in June. We now did another one in December. And it was ticketed and it was sold out. And at that time, and now I was like, okay, this thing did well. Let's focus. Let's be more intentional about the praise. So it was still trying to calculate, not knowing that it was God that was holding me by the hands and everything. So that that, that metamorphosized because over, over the times, and I will, I will sing, for instance, this Obani Jesu. At that time, it was just, you know, it was vibes. But now looking, now seeing the impact, I, I realized it was God that inspired me because it was so easy for me to record, you know. So it was, I, I, when I was recording, when I say vibes, I mean, um, I made the beats and I was just trying to flow with the beat and I was just like, okay, what's the best word that will come here? It wasn't like I did any deep trying to read the Bible or whatever, you know. But now when I even listen to the lyrics of that thing and I was like, because it, it took me maybe like 40 minutes to produce. And I listen now, I realize that, okay, this was God. So what I, what I can say is I've gotten to a place where I now recognize that my journey has been an intentionality of God leading me. And I know he's leading me somewhere. So now I'm now intentional about taking, holding his hand and following him, following him to, you know, how he's leading me. You know, for instance, again, even this year, if, what am I looking for on Hallelujah Challenge? <laughs> that is me that they will not even use to end it. You know, definitely now I'm taking. You, you say what? I said that's a fantastic uh, illustration. That was you, fantastic. You know, so definitely this year, you know, like I told you from last year, I took my personal journey with God more seriously. So yeah. definitely I'm even more serious than it. But don't be, say, I go. Do you understand? I'm not go. Earlier this year, during the whole rave of the Obadi Jesus and everything, I noticed Pastor Nathan Basi followed me and he subscribed to my YouTube. And I was that was fine. In fact, see, that was the testimony that I can share for the next 10 years. I was okay. If see, let me even make you laugh. During the course of the Hallelujah Challenge, when he started, somebody commented on his page that, oh, um, he, like, please invite him and let him come and do praise. I was I was trying to delete that comment. If it was my page, because I was like, this person, don't spoil this man, don't spoil my shoe. Somebody that I already like this, the father is following me. Don't let them see. Do you understand? Because I did not. So to now think that not only did they call me, was, you know, and me, I always say I don't believe in coincidence. That's one thing. I, you know, before things manifest in the natural, they, they yeah. happen in the spiritual, you know. I, and again, Nathan Rebassi's platform is, it doesn't do anything from his mind, you know. And these are people I've encountered. See, Nathan Rebassi, and I do not play with them. I've had encounters with them from my studio by listening to the administration. I've had like creative healings that I've, do you understand? There was one time, Dusi Oyekon was praying and there was one thing I noticed on my back like that like, was like a mole. Um, and you know, it was like a swelling and it was paining me. I just noticed it that that night. I even missed the word he said, because he said somebody, there's something at your back. It was after I said it, I now heard. I was like, amen, amen, I'm bro, I'm not lying. It was going down, I felt it. Mm -hmm. I, do you understand? So I know the level, me, I know the level of spirituality I've encountered. Mm -hmm. And so these are people I never thought, you know, so when I now saw, if I see when I was in London, when they saw, when, when, cause even that night I slept, I, 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 I was even part of Alibi that night. So when I woke up, my phone was, scared. everybody was like, ah, he mentioned your name. So when I saw it, I did not still believe I was going. So me, I saw that as a sign that, ah, God, thank you. He mentioned my name. Wow. So to now see that, you know, that and all that is part of what I'm saying that it's, it's, it's definitely there is a leading. There is somebody that is holding me through this. You know, there's that grace and everything. And now, so in terms of back to your question, so my, what I'll call my discovery, discovery of purpose is aligning myself to the person that is enabling me to fulfill the purpose. So as he, as he opens it up to me more, I just keep following and just keep following and it takes us back to that it keeps shining brighter and brighter until it becomes perfect when we achieve it and we're like oh yeah so sorry my story long no bit. <laughs> that's amazing i I, th I think i think a lot of people will be learning so many deep things from this that everyone's story is always unique uh, and i can see the uniqueness of your adventure with god just leading you level after level and just follow him no one knows the future like him so it's it's such a blessing. Well, we will talk about two things before we wrap up tonight, and they are critical things. You know, when we see people that en en enjoy some dimension of success, 
we see the the the, the affluence. We see we see the excellence in what they do. We think they don't go through challenges. You just talked about uh, the passing of your mom, and I can imagine. I can imagine because I have, I also experienced it. Uh, how tough and how challenging uh, that experience can be. Even years after, you still feel it. Now, uh, apart from that, in your music career, in your creative journey, were there experiences of challenges? Were there times you felt discouraged? Were there times you felt, look, am I wired for this thing or should I just look for something else to do? And how did you come out of that phase? And after we answer that, we're going to go a little bit into your sweetheart. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to answer that. But before answering that, to still talk about the pain a little bit, you know, when they tell you that, you know, people go through a lot, but you will not even under, you will not even understand. So London, the last London I went to, the one I went before the last one, just like two months ago, literally almost every evening, I would wear my hoodie, and that's one thing I like about London, nobody knows you. I would wear my hoodie, you know, in the evenings, carry my headphones, play worship songs, start walking, walk maybe like two hours, weeping, weeping. That's because I went to bury my sister. I lost my sister just about two months ago. My, my first mother, she means a lot to me. You know, she's, and all this while she's been, if you listen to one of my songs, I even mentioned it, you know, that um, God will heal her and everything. Although, yeah, you know, God is, God has, God is comforting us and we, you know, we see the bitter, bitter picture, we know she's with Christ and everything. But it was a very, very hard time. It was a very, very hard time for me, you know, and, um, um so those big things you know people will never especially someone like me even not for now i would not, not have even mentioned it anywhere you know and one thing i found with that one thing i found with that is when it happened i was so numb i did not even know what to feel what to think but every single time i opened my mouth and i tried to pray the the tears rush out they gush out i i had to take the walks because i did not want to see my my wife to see me cry because i weep you know and one thing i found with that was yeah the, the holy spirit was trying to comfort me because he was doing the moments of prayer and it's you i go to the depth you know and it feels like somebody's there to comfort me you know so like and there's been a couple of even personal personal you know he, here and there even challenging times that we face you know that about the over time what one thing i've learned even it came there was a time it came crazy things that probably would have only taken my life you know but at the end of it all every single time god is always showing up you know and you know over over the times i'm still learning to you know be, be build my confidence in him i have to first drop that but in terms of um so um, my my career the singing and everything you know I've, I've gotten to a point and i'm really i believe i'm getting, i'm getting better at that at that but i've gotten to a point where I think I'm, I'm i'm i've learned to trust god more than i used to be used to be but it's been freaking challenging especially Fadi Friday. As, see, every Fadi Friday, I've, I've always, it's always been busy. Do you understand? Because, you know, like you said, I, I really believe so much in excellence, you know, and I'm still striving more for excellence because I'm not even nowhere near, but it's not easy. Like, for instance, last year, the last year Fadi Friday we had was still the best year at that time. Although even some people disappointed me. It was so expensive. And if most of the times it, it, it falls back, you, that's, uh, that's the, the, Sorry, that's that's how much drive God has put in me for it. That I don't mind. I empty my account for it and everything. The one for last year, I just finished paying for it. Maybe March and maybe April this year. You know, every year when it comes, like uh, even at, at that last year before it started, I, I came online. I was like, you know what? It be like I go run away this year. Oh, I don't think you know because I, I I got to that point. But one thing I noticed about this year, this year's one, for instance, and because of how much. God has just shown himself forth. And I think he has also, he's helping me sort that out was, because we are getting to it all these times. All this, and this one is the most expensive ever. Do you understand? And, <laughs> and this is the first time I did not even think of reaching out. I did not try to reach out to anyone. I didn't, I don't have it, I didn't, I don't have it planned of God, but I just knew that it was going to be a, a jolly ride, you know. But it took, it took a lot of fears, lot, even from the onset, um, even in the comedy days before I even switched to music, you know. You have, um, you and why I won't really stop comedy, which I I didn't stop. I still I still do MC, guys. I still do comedy and MC. Although it's not most of it is usually outside Nigeria. You get so is you know let you. We'll talk about that one later. But what made me leave leave it the because I was really on the bandwagon before was 
a lot of things, you know, a lot of discouragement. For instance, you will go for shows. Like, they would even literally invite you, oh, come, I won't make you perform for my show. And you'll be, and you know, you're, you, you, I have things planned. I, I, it got to a point, you know, it got to a point where it was, it was almost as if I was uh, not funny. Meanwhile, nobody, nobody, so you go to for shows. You've already planned what you want to do and everything. And they've given you time. You go early, then they'll keep you at the backstage. And so the so called big ones, the big boys happening, they'll just go, hey, I better make I go. They'll keep putting them up before you. And they will now keep you. First of all, you, you are weary, you are tired, you are at the backstage, you don't even know what's going on. They'll now bring you at a point where, you know, the energy has dropped and your own energy has dropped. And by the time you go, do you know, and you know, most of these things is, is really sensitive. Like even the first thing you say, the reactions you get, you know, and you know, so when I noticed, and it's not once, it's not twice, it's not twice, I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do this thing. Then also the major challenge me I faced, you know, was really financing, finances, you know, but um, what I can say about that, it's not like I still have, it's not, I have one thing in the Bible. But one, of, what can, one, one, one thing I can say about that, you know, Philippians 4.19 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Ephesians 3.20 also. Philippians 4.19 that says, my Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And Ephesians 3.20, you can do exceedingly abundantly more than what you ask or imagine. So one thing I've realized is, I think I needed to remove, because there's a way I always expected that God should move, you know. And that's what always brings my fears because when I don't see that, ah, why does, has this not shown forth? Not knowing that it's trying to come from other angles, you know. But over the years, it's not, you know, allowed the shame to come in and all that. And more important, most importantly, um, the honor he has given my work, you know, because I can say here that I probably, let's say maybe I put in 10% and I'm getting results, not monetarily. But in terms of the seed is sowing in people, the response I'm getting people, maybe responses of like 200%, because people will reach out to you, oh, guy, you are so amazing, you are so good. Oh, oh, even to the point of people saying they got healing and everything, and I just realized, back to that same old thing I said, that I just know that God is really catalyzing and using, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, for his own glory. So I've come, I've over time come to rest on that, you know. But yeah, there's been a lot of challenges here and there, financial challenges discouraging ones you know emotional challenges you know you know crazier ones you know and everything but every time one comes and you god brings you out of it it makes you stronger you know and when you when you become stronger than a challenge you are over that challenge you know so all right now let, let's talk lastly as we begin to wrap up uh we have barely i think about six six minutes or seven minutes now okay. let's talk how did you meet your wife and uh has it been how many years married now and has it been we would like know. to know about that so so that's another god ordering my steps because <laughs> sincerely i will not lie oh, the attraction i initial attraction i had towards my wife was lost i will not lie it was a lost full attraction because i was in my office but because it was those days i was still single you know and remember i told you that i took god more seriously when i got married so there's a lot of things encapsulated in that uh -huh. So ah, I was in my office. I saw this girl, short skirts, light skin, my spec and everything. And I was Ima then, maybe not really, oh my God, but Ima, you know, like comedy. <laughs> I was, you know, and I was used to and everything, you know. So I expected that ah, this one would be. So, but it didn't go as, it didn't go as I planned because she didn't stand me at all. And I just found myself, you know, hooked on her. Like, why is this girl not sending me? Which was not my natural response to those kind of things because if you don't send me i'm not saying you i go move on but there was i just i just really cared about this guy i couldn't get out of my and it took me a year you know chasing her and within that year loss disappeared you know because the loss was supposed to be achieved if i if i got the attention i needed but i didn't get the attention so i was more angry so I did not know the, I did not know that things had you know it was metamorphosis metamorphosizing and everything. But I just realized that I, I became really fond of this girl and I really genuinely cared about her to the point that um I would notice if she's not feeling fine, I would get her drugs bath, you know, those kind of things that you know suppose they stand. And at the end of the day, so one funny thing that happened. So after one year, um I checked my phone one day and I checked our chat. I realized we had no chat for like two months, three months. And every single chat we had, I was the one always initiating it. Meanwhile, there was somebody else that kind of liked me and my heart was here, you know. So on that day, I was like, ah, good. And I really like this girl, but 
Make I not waste my time. Maybe make I just face here. But ah, if to say this girl feels, I'm not talking. No, if to say this girl feels, message me now. Ah yeah, she has never messaged me before. We have not chatted for over two months. And at that point, she says hi. At that point, she says hi, and she's like, um, I'm sorry, you know, we have maybe made you feel, you know, blah blah blah. I was like, hey, me, sharp guy. Next thing, next response, I was just like, hey. Does this mean you are saying yes? Have you have agreed? She said that she's not saying anything. No, she just knows that the next relationship she's getting into is going to be marriage. That was it. That was meanwhile at that time. If you had this was 2015. If you had asked me when I was getting married, that time I was vision 2022, 2023. Because that was one thing with some serious boys. Because she just I beg, maybe just the flow go. But as she said. As she said, the next person she's going to be with. Now, so I dis and from there it's been it's been. That's why I said when I said see you is one of the best things that happened to me. This one broke some record. After Jesus Christ, this marrying this lady, marrying this woman, this girl is the best thing that has happened in my life. You guys can see because I can't keep my side excitement. That's why I put some some sprinkles on Instagram here and there. You know, so yeah. <laughs> And you guys are blessed with uh, a beautiful daughter. As in very beautiful and very intelligent. And <laughs> the they make me learn English. And I know <laughs> many more to come, right, Ima? Uh, calm down with the many. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> There's one more to come. There's one more to come. I, I said wow. the, the same thing. Now, uh, I have three girls now, so I mean, the girls was. So I, mean, I don't get. I, I, mean, I don't get. I don't get the memo. You didn't quickly get the memo. That's why. <laughs> but I've gotten the memo. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been, it's been thank very you, sir. talking to you and learning from all of your adventure, your journey, the struggles, the challenges. I believe somebody's drawing must have drawn tremendous strength to say that when you see all of this. Um, glamour and the glory that you see in people today there's a story behind it there's a story of just trusting god and trusting god in the journey going through hurdles and challenges but still keeping our head high up there i thank you so much i'm going to ask you for uh, a last maybe like a word of encouragement to anybody connected across the nations of the earth maybe nigeria outside that's just trusting god that lord i know there's a future for me but uh, what is that parting word or uh, concluding word you like to share with them as we close up tonight? Okay, so I would say uh, I can I, I, at least everybody can see that there's been a considerable speed in my life this year. There's you know there's you know there's been a progress, and like I told you, I I'm still I'm still even trying to master it, but I I took my private time with God more seriously last year. You know. Um, and imagine if I had even taken it more seriously earlier, you know. So I think the answer to everything, you know, the answer is God and everything, but more practically, um, and God meets you at your own unique point, you know. Forget all those, uh, um, maybe there, this is a certain way you need to pray and everything. When you, in, you, you will find your own unique way that you meet God, but take your quiet time with god serious take i think that's the whole less sense in fact that's the that's the reason why we are the children of god that's the main reason why we are christian that you and god that is where things are going to be on, on unravel to you that is where you know uh, mountains are going to be made a lot that's that is where the answers are that quiet private time you and god because you don't hide anything you come as you are there's nobody there beside with you and everything you know so build a, build an altar around your home and when i say build it doesn't mean use sparkle it means find somewhere that this is the place that i'm going to be meeting god and it's me and god you know there's you will see a difference and it will give you the answers that you that you seek uh, that's tremendous that's very deep and i think it's very apt too for all of us uh, I believe many people must have learned so many great things tonight. I want to thank you, Ima, so much, so much, so much for taking out time from your very busy schedule to just uh, you, have this just, uh, just uh, be a blessing. And thank, thank you, you so much. So, like I said, um, uh, <laughs> this thing is like another person attending because I'm like, ah, I take rich here. Oh. Thank you. I don't take you for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a blessing. Thank you, yes, my sir. brother.
I, I like you to say what a prayer for the people just for a minute or 30 seconds, just bless them for me. Yeah. yeah. Lord, we thank you for this session today. We thank you because um, you made it come to pass. Like I always say that there are no coincidences. So this is, I, I believe that you prepared today because of some special, some people that needs to hear this. I pray that every single person hearing this and at certain stages of their lives where maybe they are confused or they are like, well, what does my future hold? Why do I proceed from here? I pray that you meet them at the point of their need. I pray that you meet them uniquely and let them know that you are more than enough. More than ever, I pray that you 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 plant a yearning for you in the hearts of people. Because once 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 people can you know choose to set you above other things, there therein lies the answer to everything else. I pray that everyone listening to me would realize for themselves that you are more than enough. I pray that the Holy Spirit in everyone you know um, um, arouses them to to get closer to you and that they will see results and that even before the end of this year testimonies will begin to spring forth and overall at the end of our journeys that we will reign with you in jesus name thank you for the answered prayer in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. praise god thank Hallelujah. you Master. thank you so thank so you, so much such a blessing uh to, to share with you tonight and uh, I look forward to having more time where we we'll talk in the nearest future. No uh, problem. No problem. Your wife, your beautiful daughter, uh, for my own, my women clan, uh -huh. uh, to your clan. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The Lord you. bless you. Thank you uh, so much. Have a refreshing evening. Right, to everyone, yes, sir. Weekend, thank you guys for staying with us. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Yeah. All right. Bye. bye. Amen.